Hallelujah. Before I start, I would like to ask Nathan just to play two worship songs for me.
among the congregation and bringing back the wounds. But I ask you, mighty God, to hold them to the to heal those wounds with the blood of Jesus. Father, I pray this morning that you're going to use me for your glory. I'm available to be used by you, Lord, Father. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I greet you all in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. You know, the Sunday of today, it marks 10 years being a church member of Shekinah. I was invited 10 years ago by my late niece. She said to me, yo, I went to this other Nigerian party and she, and I met the guy by the name of Brother Alex and the other one is Brother Z Ezekiel. They play drums. And I said to her, I go to the church Shekinah. I'll go the last Sunday. I think she came, she visited there at Senate Bank on the second Sunday. So on the fourth Sunday, we prepared the whole family. That time I, I was having jointy and then Ziki and her daughter and here we came. But on our way, as we were walking from the house to Standard Bank, she said to me, you know what, Aunt? You'll survive in that church. And I asked her why. She said to me, hey, she, she was calling Pastor, Pastor Ade, I remember. Saying Pastor Ade, he's very strict, that one. I know you'll survive there because you're also strict. And also there are other two church members. She mentioned uh, Sister Antiki also. She's also strict like Pastor. And this other one that you're going to meet, Aunt Teresa. You see when she stands by the door and tell you to sit on that chair, don't argue with her. Just go and sit there. And today, I'd like to say, even though she's not here, she led me to a home. I am proud to be part of this ministry. And I'd like to say thank you to the father of our house, Pastor. I know maybe sometimes I become disobedient and don't do what you say I must do. But I thank you for this privilege, Pastor, that you gave me today to come and share with the congregation about forgiveness. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. Uh, forgiveness is often defined as an individually voluntary internal process of letting go of feelings and thoughts of resentment, bitterness, anger and retribution towards someone who believe has wronged us, including ourselves. Forgiveness can be initiated by different means and can be a result of change, changes in cognition, offenders' behavior and the victim's behavior. When emotional forgiveness is complete, the person will have replaced the negative emotions associated with unforgiveness. In my understanding, forgiveness is not pardoning, condoning, excusing an offense or forgetting about it. There's a part that touched me when I was doing research about forgiveness. It says, forgiveness is a process that takes time, patience, and determination. We all know that patience is part of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Maybe this morning you are saying to yourself, Sister Shila has said, it's a process that's going to take time. So I can take time to forgive Susan. I'm not saying that. Even though you're going to take time, it needs you to have patience. It needs you to have determination. Forgiveness might seem challenging, but when we think about it, it simply means letting go of your anger. You hear in Zulu, they say, they're being short-tempered. But when I was studying biology, I think grade eight, they say the size of your fist, it is the size of your heart. But when someone's got anger, will say, I, this one in short term has got a small heart. Amen. A decision to let go of resentment and thoughts of revenge. The act 
that hurt or offended you might always be with you. But forgiveness can lessen its grip on you and help you free from the control of the person who has harmed you. According to the Bible, forgiveness itself is defined as letting go of sin. The Bible includes forgiving everyone, every time, of everything as an act of obedience and gratefulness to God. So if you forgive Sister Susan and Brother Tom, you must know that it is an act of obedience and gratefulness to our God. It acknowledges the sacrifice God has made through his son, Jesus, who died to restore relationship between God and man. When I say between God and man, man, I'm also including the women. Hallelujah. Let us open our Bible this morning in the book of the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 31. We'll read from verse 31 to 34. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 31, from verse 31 up until 34. If you are there, hear yeah, big amen. It says, verse 31, The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. Verse 32, It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by hand to lead them out of Egypt because they broke my covenant. Though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. Verse 33, This is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel. After that time, declares the Lord, I will put my law in their, in their minds and write in on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. Verse 34, no longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, know the Lord, because they will all know me from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their wickedness and I will remember their sins no more. But with us, when someone hates us, we always remind that person that I even remember what you were wearing on that day that you hurt me. But here the word of God say, I will forgive their wickedness and I will remember their sins no more. Hallelujah. Let us go to our next scripture. It's found in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 12. Hallelujah. Verse 12 of the Gospel of Matthew chapter 6. And forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Hallelujah. Let us open our next scripture which is found in the book of Hebrews chapter 8 verse 12. The book of Hebrews chapter 8 verse 12. Amen. It reads, Hebrews chapter 8, verse 12. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. May the good Lord bless the reading of his word. Before we can love our enemies, we must forgive them. Before we can forgive, we must learn to accept forgiveness. This is where Christianity life begins. The certainty of having been accepted by God and the assurance of forgiveness through faith in our risen Lord. If we really know Christ as our Savior, 
our hearts are broken and can and cannot be hard and we cannot refuse for forgiveness amen if you are refusing forgiveness to anybody i suggest that you have never been forgiven in your entire life pray to god and say forgive me oh god as i forgive others because what you have done for me forgive me as i forgive them because of what the cross of the lord jesus christ has done in my heart to truly forgive we must understand how much we have been forgiven whatever others have done to us it is worse than what our sins have done to the lord we must always remember that amen the distance we have to the cross to cross to forgive others is almost non existent in contrast to the distance Christ the eternal god crossed in order to forgive us this is a reality we must constantly keep before us if we are to forgive and then love by dwelling on the cross on the cost of our forgiveness we can through god's grace come to the point we can learn to forgive others even those whom we might we might have rightly deemed as our enemies amen can we go to the book of prophet isaiah chapter 53 i'll read from verse 4 to 6 isaiah chapter 53 from verse 4 up until verse 6 amen the book of prophet isaiah chapter 53 from verse 4 up until verse 6 it reads surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering yet we considered him punished by god stricken by him and afflicted verse 5 but he was pierced for our transgressions he was crushed for our iniquities the punishment that brought us peace was on him and by his wounds we are healed hallelujah the last verse we all like sheep have gone astray each of us has turned to our, to our own way and the lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all jesus has never committed sin but he sacrificed himself to down the cross so that whatever sins that we have committed god was able to forgive us There's a part where it says he was pierced other versions said he was bruised for our transgressions I think as you sit here this morning you know the sins that you have committed but you believe that God has forgiven you but when sister Susan has done something for you you are not willing to forgive him hey I know I've said earlier on it is a process it takes time it needs patience and also needs determination hallelujah amen let us open our bible in the book of matthew chapter 18 verse 27 the next topic i've written it as the gift of forgiveness the gospel of matthew chapter 18 verse 27 Hallelujah. Amen. Actually, let us start it from verse 23. Yes. But our anchor script verse will be 27. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. 
As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. Verse 25. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. Verse 26. At this servant, at this the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him and canceled the debt and let go of him. Can we open now in the book of the Gospel of Luke, chapter 23, and we'll read verse 34. Amen. Luke 23. And then the verse will be verse 34. Amen. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what are they doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. Then our next scripture is in Romans chapter 5 from verse 6 to 11. Romans chapter 5 from verse 6 to 11. Hallelujah. And hope does not put us to shame because God loved because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Verse 7, Verily, really, will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. Verse 8, But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Verse 9, Since we have now been justified by his blood, Hallelujah! How much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? Verse 4, Verse 10, I mean, for if while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more have been reconciled shall we be saved through his life? Verse 11. Not only is this so, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now, we have now received reconciliation. At the heart of Christianity, I said my topic is the gift of forgiveness that I'm sharing now. At the heart of Christianity is an incredible, wonderful concept, forgiveness. It is God's gift to families when their hearts and their relationships have been wounded. Hallelujah. Through the cross of Christ, forgiveness is offered even before the offenders as for it. By his grace, God made a fountain that has washed us and invite us to come repent and clean. Humanly forgiveness is a decision to let go of destructive malice of revenge. We remind our wounded hearts that Christ has suffered for all our sins, ours against God and that of others against us. We then pass forgiveness on. If forgiveness is ultimately to be effective, there must be repentance on the part of the wrongdoer. Hallelujah. There are recognizable earmarks of true repentance include the following. Stopping the offending behavior, giving a sincere apology, 
taking responsibility for the behavior and the damage done. Showing care for the pain of the wronged one. Making restitution in every way possible. And making changes to protect against the reoccurrence. I will read the last one because I want to share something that personal that has happened. That once happened and has happened again. It says, showing care for the pain of the wronged one. Making restitution in every way possible. And making changes to protect against the reoccurrence. I will take, I think it's, it's two minutes of what I'm going to share. I come from a family, which is from my mother's side, where forgiveness is a very hard thing. We grew up, we know that so-and-so is not talking. You don't go to so-and-so's house because it's not in good terms with so-and-so and so. But since I came here at Shekinah, there were times where Pastor be Pastor Clovis will talk about forgiveness. And I will say, while I'm sitting there on that chair, do they know what I'm going through? Can they put their shoes in what I'm feeling? It took me, I think, three years to forgive some of my family members. There's a part that say, when it's making changes to pro protect against reoccurrence, and it happened again this year in January when I went home. I was so hurt. In a way, I said, when I come back to Joburg, I'm going to change my number. I'm going to use a new number. If they're looking for me from my son, Jonty, Jonty must just tell them that my mama don't know where, where is she. I don't even have her new numbers. But when I sat down, I said, how many times... They've been preaching and telling me about forgiveness at Shekinah. It took time for me to let go of anger, to let go of whatever that has happened for my family. But now it's reoccurring again. Is it because of my Christianity, Lord, that my family always do such things to me? I do not know. But as I sat down and prayed, and I said, Lord, remember there's one time I said, I remember, Lord, that you have forgiven my sins and you have never counted how many sins that I have committed. But now when my family are coming here, are coming back again to hurt me, whereas I have let them go, it took me three years to release them from my heart. Now we're in 2022, the year have just started. It's coming back again. What must I do? But I remember the Lord said, let go, forgive them, for I have forgiven your sins. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what I wanted to share. And uh, now there's reconciliation. It says reconciliation is not the same as forgiveness. It says for reconciliation to occur, both the offender and the victim must want it and be willing to try to rebuild the trust again. I'm going to read it again to you, church. For reconciliation to occur, both the offender and the victim must want it and be willing to try to rebuild trust again. Reconciliation may follow forgiveness, but we can forgive an offender without re-establishing the relationship. When I was writing these notes, I was saying we can forgive the offender and without re-establishing the relationship, are we those Christians going to say, I've forgiven Brother Tom, but I won't forget. Because now reconciliation is saying we can forgive the offender, but there's no relationship that's going to be established. Whereas we are saying to ourselves, we are born again, I'm a new creation, all things have passed away. So and so has offended me. But I am willing to forgive that person. But I'm not willing that our friendship must continue or our neighboring thing or being a friend, a colleague. That relationship that we have, I mustn't have it. 
I believe maybe before I finish, maybe Pastor will elaborate it because I tried and asked for the revelation of the Holy Spirit that I can forgive an offender, but without re-establishing the relationship, that's reconciliation. But now, how am I going to be working with this offender if I've forgiven it, but I have not forgot what she or he has done to me? Hallelujah. Forgiveness is not based on the wrongdoer's action. Let us open our Bible in the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 7, verse 14. Hallelujah. 2 Chronicles, chapter 7, verse 14. Hallelujah. I remember the scripture when it was COVID. I think it was one of my nieces was saying, Yo, what? do you check people's status even on Facebook? Second Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14 is trending. Now look at it like, what do you mean that is trending? Because the word of God remains the same. The word of God will never change. Everything will change. Even this COVID or Quran that we are scared of, it will pass. But the word of God will remain the same. Hallelujah. It reads, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Through the open communication and consideration of each one's needs and feelings, destructive relational patterns can change patterns of conflict. Can change patterns of conflict resolution that meet the needs of both the offender and the victim can be cultivated. When the blood of Jesus Christ flowed on the cross, he made it possible for God to forgive your sins and my sins. Not only sins that we have committed in the past, but also sin that we are committing now and sin that we are still going to commit in the future. Hallelujah. God is always to forgive us on the grounds of work of reconciliation of his son and God forgive us because he is a merciful father we have to do nothing ourselves other than confess our sins in order to receive God's forgiveness amen and yet the forgiveness of God lays a great responsibility on us May we kindly open our Bible in the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 32. Ephesians 4, and we'll read verse 32. It reads, Be kind and compassionate. To one another, forgive each other just as in Christ God forgave you. Hallelujah. When Paul gave the Ephesians a number of guidelines for new believers in Christ, he wrote what we've just read. If you have found it difficult to forgive other people in the past, I will urge you to go back to the book of the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 14 to 15, and read what Jesus said in the, in the Sermon on the Mount about forgiveness. Ask God to help you to forgive other people with your whole heart just as he is prepared to do for you. Hallelujah. We are to ask him to help us to forgive other people with all our hearts. 
just as he's prepared to do for us. Hallelujah. I know when I'm talking about forgiveness, I am opening the past to other people where they've let go. I know earlier on I've said it is a process, it takes time, it needs patience, it needs determination. This morning, acknowledge the hurt. Sometimes you need to consider how the hurt and the pain has affected you. People these days that are going through mental illness, they have been hurt. The pain has affected them. But this morning I'm saying, repair, learn to forgive. Work on forgiveness. I know it's not an easy thing, but work on forgiveness. Because no one is perfect. Only Christ who died for us on the cross. I've written a question. Why does it take long to forgive? Ways that hinder forgiveness may include holding onto the grudge, thinking it will somehow punish the other person so we can feel righteous. Hey, Jesus. How does it take long to forgive? Because we are even unable to forgive ourselves. I just want to share just a small about my late mom. My mother was one person who was finding it hard to forgive herself, to forgive other people. There was a situation where it led her, it led her to depression. I remember they did some brain scan and then I asked the doctors who were doing brain scan, why don't you give me back what are the results? The doctor said, the person who sent you to come and do the brain scan, you can go back to her. She or he will tell you what happened with the results. And my family kept on saying, um, my mother is cruel. That's why it's got a problem to forgive other people and to forgive herself. As time goes by, we were refer I was referred to go to go to Tara with her. And when I went to Tara, I said to those doctors there, I can't be taking my mother to this institution. She won't forgive me at all. Because when I went there, I found people who were worse, worse mentally. And I'm like, if I have to leave my mother here, I won't forgive myself for the rest of my life. And I asked the doctor was there, can I be the one who's treating her at home and taking care? She'll go for her treatment. And then the doctor goes like, no, other people, look at that lady. That lady got divorced. She lost everything. Now she's recovering. She's recovering. She's running. I'm like, look at this doctor. I said, I hear you what you're saying. This one was addicted into gambling. It led her, it led her to mental illness. This is what I said to her, you know what? If I can tell you what has happened back, my mother's got a problem of forgiving other people. She's got a problem even to forgive herself. That is what led her to this mental health we are talking about, doctor. There's no witchcraft or anything that has happened. It's not easy for her to release a person deep down in her heart because she will keep on saying, I took them as my own kids. I love them. But I don't understand today they are telling me that I must leave. I must move out of this house because I've built it in someone's else stand. But this morning, I have forgiven even the very same people that led to mental illness. Hallelujah. 
May we open our Bible in the book of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 21 to 22. And then you can page and go to Luke 23, verse 34. Hallelujah. Matthew 18, verse 21 to 22. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Verse 19, again, truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by the Father in heaven. For where two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. Verse 21. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Verse 22. Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. How many of us here this morning we are able to forgive a person 77 times as Master Jesus Christ said in the word of God. Hallelujah. Can we go to the Gospel of Luke 23, verse 34? Hallelujah. It's about forgiveness. Father, Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they, don't, for they do not know what they are doing. To walk in forgiveness, may you shake off any offense that you are tempted to cling to. May you instead wrap yourself up in the complete and affection of Christ. May you learn to forgive yourself and as you forgive others. May you believe that God's promises are more powerful than your blunders. Embrace God's redemptive plans for your life with hope and expectance. You are truly and deeply loved by God. Before I close, Hallelujah. May we all rise and say this prayer after me. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, I make fresh commitment to you to live in peace, to get along with everybody with my brothers and sisters of the body of Christ, with my friends, associates, neighbors, and family. Father, I repent of holding to bad feelings towards others. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. You need to let go of bitterness, anger, harsh words, all type of bad behavior. Please say after me while you are seated. By faith, I receive your forgiveness. Knowing that you cleanse me from all the wrongs that I have done. I ask you to forgive and release all who have wronged and hurt me. In the name of Jesus, I forgive and release them. I will show them kindness and, and mercy just as you have shown me. 
Hallelujah. Amen. If Jesus is asking to forgive those who crucified him, whom did this include? The Roman soldiers, Pontius Pilate, Herod, chief priest, and the scribes. Should we not forgive everyone? Should we not forgive everything that has happened to us? You know, yesterday we attend the prayer for vision and mission. I grabbed something from past. I said, an abuse is intentional. So many things have happened in our lives. We've been hurt. We've been wounded. We've been beaten up. There's a thing they say in our culture, I think it happens in the African culture congregation, where said someone's son impregnates someone's daughter. And then when they go there to go and report, they say they are looking for damages. When the girl goes there with his family, the boy said, I do not know him. I do not know her. I've never met her. Even the parents, they even support what that boy has said. People have been hurt. It's not easy for them to move on with their lives. But when we remember what happened 2,000 years ago, when Jesus forgave our sins, he never counted that, Sheila, you have hurt so and so. He never counted that you have backstabbed so and so in the company. He never counted that you have hurt your mother, your father, your uncle, and your sister because he had compassionate love, compassionate love towards you. We might have been going through abuse when we were young. When we were being beaten, we felt that our parents they don't love us, they're abusing us according to today's democracy. But we, little did we know that they care for us. They showed us that they love us. Before I close, I think when I was 24 years old, I was invited in my father's house, my dad in Soweto. It was the first time going there. And when I left, I told my mother lies. That mama, Ellis is taking me out, is taking me out to stairs. Whereas I knew they were doing my aunt's. Uh, unveiling, so they say all the children, the family needs to go there. I went there. As I went there, I felt like an outsider. My dad has been part of my life on since I was born up until now. He's still th that dad who cares for me. But now, when we were sitting there, the mother of the house came to me because I was sitting next to one of my sister's helper. He's saying to child to my aunt, Victoria. Why you never told me you came with one of the Maharaji's daughters? Then I look at her. Why is she saying I, Mahara, um, I look like Maharaj family? It was because of the hairstyle that I did. You know, she came to me and said to me, I know everyone that is here. The only person that I know is you. I know that young boy. She was pointing to John T. I kept quiet. I didn't answer. She kept on looking and looking at my face. Then she picked up, because all my dad's kids, we've got small ears. So she said to me, it's fine, it is well. My brother came and say, and I said, I, like she was looking to me, you came with who? Because your auntie said you didn't come with her. I said, I was invited by my brother. Then she's listening, which brother? I said, Onassis, hey, she fumed. She changed her face, she went inside the house, and I felt like, you know what, here, yeah, I'm not welcome. I think I'm going to ask my brother Liz to take me back to you. Or is it because I didn't tell my mother the truth where I was going? But the following week, we had a family gathering. You know, God works in wonders. She called me aside. That, you know what, my daughter, please forgive me. But she was saying in Tswana that, Go bound to her early. please forgive me. I know you were there. Your father did talk about you. But now it came as a shock when you just arrived in my house. I know we have a family gathering. And I used to hear things that, ah, your father is always there for you and all those things. But she said to me, please forgive me. 
I pray that you will have a, a space in your heart to forgive my daughter. And I said to her, you know what, mom? I've forgiven you. And since my mother has passed away, I've taken her as my mom. When I miss her, I'll go to Soweto. And she'll cry that, truly indeed, Sheila, your mother raised you in a proper way. You know who Christ is. I thought when you are coming here, you're coming to check on your dad because he's in the hospital. But I'm so happy. These are tears of joy that you came to check on me. If she was able to forgive me, I said, dear Lord, if someone is doing something to me, why can't I forgive that person? So in closing, whoever has had you, if it had come that you need to send a text, a WhatsApp or call and take initiative, even though you know you are not an offender, you didn't do any that person harm, whether it be your friend or your relative or your former partner or in the relation that you were before, now you don't see eye to eye. I urge you this morning, forgive that person. Let go of anger and resentment from your heart. I learned this morning when I was doing Bible study that when you don't forgive people, it holds your blessings. It holds your peace. I believe if you have forgiven someone, you live a happy life, a peaceful life. If Jesus Christ 2,000 years ago was able to forgive you, why you find it difficult to let go? May the good Lord bless this message that I shared this morning, Lord. It was not easy, Almighty God, but it was worth it. I thank you, Lord, through the, the blood of Jesus Christ, for I know through the blood of Jesus Christ, there's forgiveness, there's healing, there's atonement. We store our lives today, Father God. We might have gone through pains, Lord. We might have been abused, Almighty God. We might have been promises, Father God, jobs. We might have been promises, Father God, business opportunities. Father God, this morning, we are repenting. We surrender all to you, Father God. You are a faithful God. You are Jehovah Shiva One. You are Jehovah Roy. You are the God who see what we do not see, Lord. We are letting go of anger this morning. We are letting go of resentment, Father God, of what Christ did in the cross. Father, we bless your name this morning. We magnify your name. I thank you, Lord, for the strength that you've given me this morning to use me, Father God, to share, Father God, about forgiveness to those who are watching at home. It, not, it is not easy to forgive your dad. It is not easy to forgive your mother. It is not easy to forgive your uncle what she has done, what he has done to you. This morning, come back to the throne of grace and ask God to let the forgiveness to run through you. It is a process. It will take time, Almighty God. It needs patience. It needs determination. But this morning, Father God, as your children, God, we say, Almighty God, make your way when there's no way. We want to say thank you for the blood of Jesus, Lord. We want to say thank you for grace, Lord. It is your grace that we are not able to hold righteous anymore to the people who have wronged us, Lord. We ask all these things, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank the Lord for that message. It's quite a lot uh, within a short uh, space of time. And then we need to uh, pray for the sister as well because unless you have a revelation and experience of the way God works and the things of God before you can preach it. And I believe that uh, forgiveness has become a revelation because you have embraced it, you have practiced in it, and that is what God wants us to do. Amen. So let's stretch our hands towards her and ask God, God to bless her. That the Lord, that the healing that the Lord has begun in her life be perfected in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray, mighty God, for your healing upon her life. We thank you, Lord God, for enriching our life with the revelation of forgiveness. For while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. And Father, mighty God, we bless your name. We thank you for our life. We ask, O oh Lord God, that you strengthen her, you protect her and her family and children. We 
pray mighty God that shall grow from strength to strength in the name of Jesus we pray mighty God today that this word will resonate with all of us and all those that are watching and all the members of the family that Lord we will Lord continue Lord to overcome the spirit of unforgiveness and today we receive forgiveness as a gift of the Holy Spirit we receive forgiveness as a gift Father we ask to bless her release oh lord god increase her we pray almighty god for replenishment of that which she has released today in the name of jesus amen let's put our hands together Hallelujah. praise the name of the lord amen and amen that is too small for god now clap for jesus jesus amen uh, thank you uh mr sheila that's um awesome and um, we pray that we all continue to, you know faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God and as we hear about this word forgiveness is a gift is what we must practice Paul says I die daily that means there are things he has to let go there are things he has to forgive and forget and so we thank the Lord for all the words that we have received today and we shall hold them dearly. I've made a lot of a lot of notes. And um, very importantly, is the work of the Lord Jesus Christ for us. You now she quoted from Romans chapter five. She quoted from Isaiah fifty-three, and that Isaiah fifty-three, um, Isaiah fifty-three, from verse four to six, where it also says that He took upon Himself our transgression. Can tell you there is no sin that you cannot bear there is no offense rather that you cannot bear or somebody sins against you that you cannot bear for he himself he took upon himself the transgression for your own peace for your own well-being and so it is with forgiveness is for your own peace it's for your own peace the joy in the Holy Ghost. So it's important. And when we think about what God has done for us, we will learn to let go of certain things that people may have done for us or to us. Again, I heard forgiveness around mental illness it's so much that that's an aspect that the world has not even taken into consideration a lot of people she didn't make emphasis on it but I just want to point that out that a lot of people are in poor mental state because of the past hits, because of the offenses that they build up within themselves, it becomes a stronghold in their life. Offense becomes a stronghold. Abuse growing up or being adult becomes a stronghold in themselves. And they are not able to see into the future. They are not able to see who God has made them. They lost the self-awareness. So, forgiving the past stories, forgiving those things that were denied in your life. Some people are upset with their father because he was never there. And they carry that to an adult age. They couldn't forgive their father because he was never there. But I want to tell somebody, he never even had it. He never even had it. So don't think certain deniers when you are growing up is intentional. Some never had it. Some fathers never had it. Some parents never had it. So don't grow up with such an offense or deny that you cannot um, you know, forgive. We have heard victimization, victimization, experiences built up in people. The story of being victimized, either because you are not tall enough or you are not like them, or you don't have the same color like them, or your nose is not the same as their nose, and they make you 
different among so many, yet you live in the same house. These are victimization that has built up unforgiveness as you grow up and you begin to think about the way you are victimized when you were a, 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 a little child or a young girl or a young boy. So this in Christ Jesus must leave you because a future has been painted for you that is greater than your past. And this is how you must see your life. So you don't live with unforgiveness. You don't think about those things that were never there or those people that were never there for you. Don't let that be an offense in your life. The psalmist says, if my mother and my father forsake me, he said, the Lord will, will take care of me. So God is already taking care of you right now. Forgive the past and let the past be past in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm not a preacher today, but thank you, uh, Minister Sheila, for what you have shared with us and those that will also watch it. This is what you must download. I will share it with you so that you listen to it many times. And share it. This is what you should share. Don't share all those funny stories. This is what you should share. There's so much unforgiveness in this world. There's so much unforgiveness in marriages and families. This one did this to me 10 years ago. This one did this. People can store up things in their head. So as children of God, remove those things and store up the revelation of the word of God. That's what will fill up your heart. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's give Jesus a clap of faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you once again. And uh, may God bless you. Um, we're going to close right now. And uh, we today we take, um, uh, what do you call it? The mission of friend. Amen. Mission of friend. We use it to do things to enable the work of God move forward. So I want you to give a quality offering today. Maybe perhaps somebody hasn't forgiven me. That's why he's not giving a good offering. You have heard about forgiveness. Maybe that's why you are not paying your tithe. You have heard about forgiveness. Praise the name of the Lord. So be joyful today and bring out a worthy offering for the mission. May God bless you. Let's stand up and let's dance to this moment. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's, let's have the drama here. Let's sing a song and we dance. Hallelujah. Hosanna. Hallelujah. Hosanna. Hallelujah. Hosanna. Hallelujah. Hosanna. Do you know that song? Hallelujah. Hosanna. Hallelujah, Hosanna. Hallelujah, Hosanna. Hallelujah, Hosanna. Hosanna. Hallelujah, Hosanna. Hallelujah, Hosanna. Hallelujah, Hosanna. Hallelujah, Hosanna. Hallelujah, Hosanna.
Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come before thy throne of grace this morning. And we ask Almighty God that all that we have received today will be permanent in our life. The showers of blessings of your word, the gift of the Holy Spirit, the spirit of forgiveness, go with us. And we pray, mighty God, that Lord, as we go into our respective communities, May this spirit of forgiveness go with us. Even as we drive on the road, as we go to work, as we go to the shops and all that, we will meet different people that will do things to us. Father, remind us of your word. In the name of Jesus. In our homes, let there be peace. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus' name. Let's share the grace and fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Have a wonderful week. God bless you. Amen. I'll see you again.
my friend. 